when people talk about cannibals, which I know comes up often, they usually think of island tribes or fictional characters such as Hannibal Lecter. The truth is, cannibals exist in real life. Here are five real life cannibals that have lived among us. 1. Jeffrey Dahmer Jeffrey Dahmer is one of the most notorious serial killers in American history. He committed his first murder just after he graduated high school. He dissolved the flesh of the body in acid and flushed it down the toilet. He crushed the bones with a sledgehammer and scattered them in the woods. He went more than nine years before he murdered again. He killed one or two young men through the late 1980s, but that number rose to four in 1990 and a staggering eight victims in 1991. That was only until July when he was arrested. He had an obsession with collecting his victims' skulls and preserving them. He would sometimes paint the skull before adding it to his collection. He would dissolve most of the flesh in acid so it could be flushed down the toilet, but he did save flesh and organs, which he would later consume. His last few victims also underwent what Dahmer described as his drilling technique. He would drug the young man, drill a hole in his brain, and then inject either hydrochloric acid or boiling water into their brain. He thought this technique could provide him with a person who was in a permanent submissive state. He was eventually caught and arrested in July of 1991. He was sentenced to 16 life terms plus 930 years. On November 28, 1994, Jeffrey Dahmer was beaten to death by another inmate while on work detail. 2. Richard Chase Richard Chase was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia as a young adult. He would often complain that his heart had stopped beating or that someone had stolen his pulmonary artery. He once had to be taken to the hospital because he had injected rabbit blood into his veins. He killed his first victim in December of 1977. It was a drive-by shooting and was an apparent warm-up for the crimes he had planned to commit. Chase's killing spree began when he shot a woman who was three months pregnant. He then raped her, cut out multiple organs, and drank her blood. A few days later, he entered a house with four people in it, a mother, her six-year-old son, her 22-month-old nephew, and her neighbor. Chase shot all four of them, raped the mother, and drank her blood. He then split the neighbor's skull and consumed some of his brains. When a young girl from the neighborhood knocked on the door, Chase stole the neighbor's car and fled, taking the 22-month-old's body with him. He took it back home where he drank the blood and ate several organs. Police received a tip that Chase might be the spree killer and when they went to his apartment to question him, he wouldn't cooperate. They waited down the hall until Chase came out of the apartment carrying a number of bloody items, one of which was a gun. He was arrested and found guilty of six counts of first-degree murder. He was sentenced to death, but the following year he committed suicide in his cell. 3. Albert Fish In 1898, Albert Fish's mother arranged for him to marry a young woman and they had six children together. Most people believe that his wife leaving him in 1917 is what sent him down the road of murder. While they were together, Fish admitted to molesting young boys and one time had a sadomasochistic relationship with an intellectually disabled 19-year-old. After his wife left him, he began committing self-harm and claimed to have auditory hallucinations. Later he claimed that God was commanding him to torture and sexually mutilate children. Fish started killing in 1919. He would find young children and lure them somewhere private. He would strangle them, mutilate their bodies, and take flesh with him. The most notable murder was of 10-year-old Grace Budd. In 1928, he convinced her family that he was going to a birthday party for his niece and asked if he could bring Grace with him. They agreed and she was never returned. In 1934, Grace's mother received a letter where Fish explained what happened to Grace. He said he took her to an empty house where he strangled her and cut her body into pieces. Then he took the pieces back home and ate her entire body. The letter was traced back to Fish, who was arrested and tried for murder. He was found guilty and sentenced to death. On January 16, 1936, Albert Fish was executed by electric chair. 4. Issy Sagawa One of the most shocking details of Issy Sagawa is not that he killed and ate a young woman, but the fact that he was released and is still free to this day. In 1981, while Sagawa was attending university in France, he invited a classmate to dinner at his apartment so they could study poetry. While there, he shot her in the neck and had sex with her body. 
He then spent the next three days eating various parts of her body. He stuffed her remains into two suitcases and tried to dump them into a lake, but was caught in the act. He was charged with murder, but the court found him unfit to stand trial. He was held in a mental institution for a few years, but the French authorities deported him back to Japan. At a psychiatric hospital in Tokyo, psychologists somehow found him to be sane. Meanwhile, France had dropped the charges against him and sealed the files, so Sagawa was not able to be legally charged in Japan. He was released and is still a free man today. 5. Armin Maivis Unlike other cannibals on this list, Armin Maivis killed and ate a man who wanted to be killed and eaten. In 2001, he posted a request on the internet asking for a man, 18 to 30, who was interested in being killed and eaten. He received a number of responses, but they all backed out beside one man. The man arrived at his home, where they had sex before the victim used sleeping pills and alcohol to prepare him for the next step. Mivis cut off the man's penis, which they attempted to eat, but were unsuccessful. Then he murdered the man and cut his body into pieces, which he froze for later consumption. He even ground his bones into flour. Ten months later, Mivis was almost finished consuming his first victim, so he posted another message on the internet. This time, the ad was reported to police, and the cannibal was arrested. They found 15 pounds of human flesh in his freezer, as well as videos of the killing. He was initially convicted of manslaughter and sentenced to eight and a half years in prison. The following year, prosecutors appealed the sentence, claiming the videotape proved the act was murder and not manslaughter. He was then retried and convicted of murder and sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. Thanks for watching. If you like these videos, please click subscribe, hit like, or leave me a comment. You can check out more stories about the worst people on the planet by going to our blog, thisismonsters.com. You can also listen to our podcast, This Is Monsters, available wherever you listen to podcasts.